How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here again. This time we're going to take a look at the representations of orbitals. So our objectives will be to describe the three-dimensional shapes of orbitals for the SP and D sublevels. That's it. All right, so shapes of orbitals? What do you what do you mean shapes of orbitals? Well, remember psi represents the wave function for an electron's matter wave. That's not this should be for an electron's matter wave, right? So psi squared is the probability density. It gives you the probability of finding an electron at some distance r from the nucleus. Now each electron has a different psi squared, a different probability density. So we can use this equation to get an electron density representation for a particular electron. So this would be an electron density representation. Right, you can see where it's darker, you're more likely to find an electron than where it's lighter. The more commonly used are contour representations, where we use solid fill for where you would have, let's say, 90% chance of the electron, or I'm sorry, 90% of the electron density, or some other percentage chance. So instead of having this cloud, we have these solid contours, and we say, you know, 90% of the electron density is within this solid contour. So shapes of orbitals, okay? What do you need to know? You need to know that psi squared was used to determine the shapes. You need to know what the shapes look like for s, p, and d orbitals. You also need to know that all s orbitals have the same shape, meaning that the s sublevel in the first energy level has the same shape as the s sublevel in the third energy level. And the same is true for the b and the d orbitals. All right, so all s orbitals have the same shape. All p orbitals have the same shape regardless of what energy level they're in. What you don't need to know is how the math works. Yeah, don't need to know about the math with the psi squared and stuff. No, nah, we're not going to get into that. You also don't need to know what the f orbital looks like because things start getting messy and there's a lot of them. So we're not going to do that. So let's start s orbitals. What it looks like. It looks like a sphere. It's a sphere shape. It's spherically symmetrical. So you can see the electron density representation right here. Uh, contour representation would just look like a big old circle, big old sphere, right? S for sphere, you can think of that. The p orbitals, and there's three of them, they all look similar. They all have this kind of peanut shape. Uh, they got two lobes, and they have different orientations in three dimensions. So I got maybe some lined up with the x, I got some lined up with the y, maybe I got some lined up with the z, and then when they all come together, they kind of look like this, which is a pretty neat shape, right? So we got the contour representation here. We have the electron density representation over there. All right, P's not terrible. Now the D orbitals start to get a little messy, right? There's five of them. Four of them look like a four-leaf clover, right? You can kind of see it. You squint maybe. You see a four-leaf clover thing going on. And the fifth one looks kind of like a peanut playing with a hula hoop. Uh, yeah, because that's what I see right? But interestingly enough, all of them have the same energy associated with them despite different shapes. So their shapes haven't affected the energy for them at all. So yeah, summarize. Can you describe the three-dimensional shapes for the SP and the D sublevels? That's, that's it. All right. Goodbye.